What's going on, tribe? My name is Nicole. And my name is Kia, and we are the co-founders of Glamorina. Yep. Glamorina is an inclusive women's lifestyle brand specializing in culturally inspired activewear, intentionally designed to complement all complexions and body types. Our mission is to provide a safe space in health and wellness where every body belongs. Yes. Welcome to Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission podcast, where we discuss how we balance being successful Black women, uh, entrepreneurs, working nine to five jobs, um, motherhood, self-care, everything in between. Yes, definitely. Lots to juggle. So before we dive into Mm -hmm. today's topic, as we do every single episode, we want to do a mental health check-in. We do this every episode so that you guys can check in with yourselves. We can check in with mm-hmm. each other. Just see where our mental state is. So this week, how are you feeling, Kia? How is your mental health? Yeah, I love the mental health check-ins. It reminds me um, of a school I used to work at, a Montessori school in Bethesda. And uh, as teaching teams, you know, both lead teachers or classroom teachers, before the day started, they had kind of like a little check-in, a sit-down um and just you know checking on each other so i think that's really important um so for me how am i feeling i'm feeling pretty good we had a trip recently to new york glamorina took a trip to new mm-hmm. york we hosted um a, a spin class a cycling event at bikeland and that was super fun um i just feel really happy about that i was worried about mm-hmm. the weather it was like so many things i was worried about and honestly i feel like everything just came together. And Mm -hmm. that, you know, that always makes me feel better when things just fall into place. So I've been, you know, just feeling good about that. (laughs) Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people can attest to, you know, you might have anxiety built up around, like if something big is about to happen, Mm -hmm. you don't know what's going to happen. Then once it comes together, you get that little bit of relief. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So yeah, coming off of that event, um, it definitely you, you definitely feel good. You feel a little bit of a mm-hmm. relief because you've got it done. You've accomplished things. And right. it was it was pretty successful. You know what I mean? Everything we wanted to happen may not have happened, but some great things came out of it, I believe. So that has mm-hmm. definitely boosted my mood for the week um, to a certain extent. Life is still lifing. Adulting is yes. still happening. So there's there's <laughs> there's that. But I think I'm right. pretty good mentally. I'm not. You know, I'm not in a bad space. So I hope you guys are checking in with yourselves. Hopefully you're doing well. And, you know, if you're not Mm -hmm. doing the best, you know, you'll get over that. There's sun on the other side of that that storm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's definitely a lot going on in the world. Oh, my goodness. People in hospital. uh, Jamie Foxx, I think he's um, hospitalized right now. No, Uh, really? I believe so. I I heard about that. I haven't really... um, read up on it but i've seen like celebrity posting about it so you know we are sending prayers to him i know there was a young uh young boy that was shot recently i know my god i've heard of that story but he was went to the wrong house looking for his siblings and i believe it was an older white gentleman that shot him so he's in the hospital so we're sending prayers to him and his family as well um so yes it's a lot going on in the world um but we are trying to stay positive Mm -hmm. as best we can um and so you know an interesting thing that a topic that's been trending lately is um apparently there's going to be like a docu-series or documentary on hulu um about kind of like behind the scenes of freaknik Mm -hmm. so if anyone um so that's what our episode about today (laughs) today's episode is going to be about uh freak nick documentary and we're going to talk about you know why that documentary is making people nervous um kind of just the discussion on it and and you know what that leads to in terms of how much is too much when we're showing ourselves you know kind of uh (laughs) social media or you know putting ourselves out there yeah, definitely. And I mean, we just thought this was super timely. Like it's it's the trending topic right now. So why not um, touch on this, especially as professional women, as entrepreneurs who have a brand that we would like to protect. So a recent mm-hmm. article published by The Root stated that a handful of prominent black women professionals are even considering taking legal action against Hulu for potentially exposing their actions, um, mm-hmm. which could have implications on their current professional life. So they might have participated, had their little good time at Freaknik back in the day, 
Now they're prominent mm-hmm. black women. You know, they have professional careers and they are, you know, seriously con- considering legal action because they don't want that to tarnish their current name, their current brand, their current career. So we definitely yes. want to dive into that and how just what you do is especially today. Right. Uh-huh. We, we don't have camcorders now. We have like you can post, you can record and post instantly. Yes. So it's yep. just like another level these days so we definitely want to get into that too Mm -hmm. absolutely so for anyone who may not know freak nick is an annual festival or was an annual festival um based out of atlanta it it was i believe in the 80s and 90s and it um started at hbcu um it was like a picnic pretty Mm -hmm. much and it just blew up to you know this major music festival for the most part, you know, it was showcasing R and B and hip hop artists. A lot of people were coming down there. I imagine it as if it's like, you know, this big spring break, you know, it's just something mm-hmm. fun that a lot of people went down it's like to the party the of the year. year. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It definitely became the party. It put Atlanta on the map for sure. And so, um, you know, a lot of things are happening. What, you know, what, what happens when you mix in alcohol and good music and fun mm-hmm. and you out there and you're young, I'm thinking eighties and nineties. Cause I was reading, seeing a couple of videos that were back, say 90, I think it said 93. So I was about nine years old. Um, so I, you know, my generation and, uh, like we've heard of freak Nick, I just mm-hmm. didn't know a whole lot about it, but now this documentary on Hulu apparently hasn't come out yet. They haven't even put out a trailer yet. Um, mm-hmm. it's just like some rumblings. Yeah. Um, you know, they're saying they have a lot of footage, a uh, little video camcorders that those were out back then mm-hmm. of, um, you know, a lot of stuff going on, a lot of, you know, sexual things, you know, people dancing in the street, people, a lot of. Uh, footage of, you know, naked bodies, half naked, you know, mm-hmm. scandalous, uh, scandally clothed women. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's, um, people are getting worried about this because, you know, again, this was 40 years ago. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people that maybe participated in Freak Nick went down there, had a good time. Mm-hmm. May, there, there may or may not be some footage of them doing something wild. And, you know, back in the day, back in the 80s and 90s, there was no social media, so mm-hmm. it wasn't going to be broadcasted. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are just like, like you mentioned earlier, especially women, because we have to remember freak Nick wasn't just women down there. It was men and women having a good time. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people, women specifically are a little bit worried because, okay, if you think, you know, this woman is a mom or a business owner or, you know, someone prominent in the community. It, yeah. And there's a video that's going to be on this national platform. Yep. You know, it's not just on Facebook, but it's like Hulu where people can watch it over and over and over again. And you dance in, in the street, you know, with your thong on. It's like, oh my yeah. gosh, if someone recognizes me. Not only that, I- not only that, but think about it. I mean, we're all humans, right? Think mm-hmm. about college days, right? Yes. Drinking. A lot of times <laughs> when you drink and this is, you know, whether we want to admit it or not, it happens. Sometimes you black out. You don't even remember what happened the night before. So a lot of these women are probably nervous because they don't even know, you know, they don't know what they did possibly, you know? Yeah. And it, it's just crazy because for me, you know, I'm a little younger than you, but I always knew about Freak Nick from even like, this is, uh, might sound a little youthful, but Sister Sister, there was like a episode where they pretend went to freak nick and like my oh, really? performed and it was just like it was so popular that sitcoms were even talking about it so, absolutely it was a music like yeah. Will kim said something about like go down to freak nick yeah. I mean, it was so it was so popular it. in urban right. black culture so absolutely if it was still today i'm sh- i don't i don't think they're having it today and if they do it's probably not at the level that it used to be yeah but it, not, it was just so. people wanted to be there you know and mm-hmm. i just know personally as a teenager in college you know, you're you're not trying to filter yourself. You're not thinking about the future and your future business and how in, you know, being a mom and how it's going to impact you later. So I, I totally mm-hmm. understand the nervousness uh, around this documentary coming out. Yeah, absolutely. Because everyone definitely, again, I feel like my generation is just like, 
um, thank God there wasn't social media back in the day. I mean, even just a slight party and not necessarily blacking out, but drinking just in general, obviously that's a, it's going to alter your state. Um, and you know, again, music partying, that's what people went down there for. That's what the, the festival kind of was about. I was enjoying this music and then also just a lot of like freaky ish going on. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, women are upset. And we'll keep saying women. We have to, again, everybody was down there, men and women, but specifically women are threatening to possibly sue the network, sue Hulu if this footage, if this documentary comes out because they were like, hey, we never signed any media mm. releases. We didn't want to, you know, we didn't agree. That's a little bit different than how it is now, which we'll go into. But, um, you know, back in the day, it was really like, you got you should ask me first before you put me on camera. Like you're supposed mm-hmm. to ask me. Everyone wasn't recording. It wasn't, there wasn't uh, other platforms to post because again, social media wasn't out there. So it's that aspect, which is why a lot of people are talking about, you know, is this documentary going to come out? Like some women are even going on social media and posting some pictures of themselves and just kind of like in a joking way this is yeah i was down there i'm hoping it's not going to come out and some it's funny they're trying Mm -hmm. to like get ahead of the game right but i do as we were reading this article that you mentioned on the route um they were also saying and there's some video footage of um rape and sexual assaults Mm -hmm. also and so you know people were saying you know the festival, I guess it was turning into yep. kind of uh, a scary place for the rape fest. Blacks. They were yeah. calling it a rape fest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think they said there was like a video or something. I didn't click on any of the videos, but uh, of men just grabbing women's clothes and just like ripping like a woman, just taking her clothes completely off. Um, so there's that. And that's upsetting and could be triggering and things like that. So I I, I don't know. It's uh it's a tough yeah. situation and, for sure. And I don't know. I didn't look into like who exactly is behind the documentary because that's going to play a part, too. Right. And I think that's why the headlines are like a lot of women are nervous. But, had you, you know, depending on who's behind it and how the story is told, a lot of men could get in trouble, too, and should be scared. You know what I mean? Because sure. of of the whole, you know, rape fest tagline that the, you know, the event had. So it, yeah. I, I'm just curious and I'll have to do a little bit more research to see like who's behind it. Because obviously mm-hmm. if women were behind it, you know, the story is going to be told a different way or it's going to sure. be hi- th- different things are going to be highlighted. So yeah. that's a whole nother topic that the sexism and mm-hmm. you know, all of those. Kind of what's the motive yep. of putting this documentary out there? Yeah. Uh, what's the motive behind that? Absolutely. So it does, you know, with this, um, when talking about this topic, it, you know, it kind of makes you start to think because let's fast forward to today. Today, uh, everything is recorded. I mm-hmm. mean, if you drop something outside or you and your partner starts arguing, someone sometimes just pulls out a phone yeah. and starts recording you. So to, in today's mindset, when you're out and about outside of your house, you almost kind of have to think I may be recorded while mm-hmm. I'm out. And it kind of, you know, made Nicole and I think about how much is too much when you're posting, you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or, um, or what you're doing, I'm sorry, not when you're posting, but how much is too much in terms of like your behavior out in public. If you, again, are a business owner, if you are someone in the community, what have you, if you have, you know, something to lose, uh, you know, based off of inappropriate behavior, how much is too much? Because obviously you want to be able to go out and be yourself. Mm -hmm. But I just think, you know, if, if, as a business owner, if I'm, if I go out and then I was, you know, I've never done this, but if I'm drinking and I start dancing on the bar on top of the bar. Right. And then this video comes out and then it's like, well, you're supposed to own like a business and about sisterhood and stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and you're a mom and you post pictures (laughs) of you and your daughter and then you're getting drunk on the bar. Yeah. Dancing on top of the bar. Yeah. You know, that had a lot of consequences. So, you know, what are your yeah. thoughts behind that? There, There's a fi- I feel like there's a fine line between being your authentic self, living your most authentic life and mm-hmm. kind of being a public figure. Right. Because, yeah, in a sense, when you own a business and, you know, it becomes popular to a certain extent or even if you're a doctor in, you know, in the community or even a teacher, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. to watch yourself because, for example, I remember my daughter's uh, elementary school principal. I went to like Fridays or something on a maybe Friday evening and I saw her at the bar at happy hour and I definitely judged her. 
But I had to step back yeah. and say, you know what? She, she deserves a break. She she wasn't like wilding out or anything, but she mm. was having a drink, having a good time at the bar. But I did kind of judge her for a yeah. second. Because I'm like, hold on, wait, you you because she's a principal. Yeah, you're leading the school. Yeah. Yeah. Which is different than I think a teacher. Maybe I don't know how to a certain extent felt. to a certain mm-hmm. extent, I think, because. I think it's I think it's different, but similar, because mm-hmm. if my daughter's teacher is behaving a certain way, depending on what it is, like if she's just at happy yeah. hour, that's one thing. But if you're a happy hour yeah. and you're dancing on tables, yeah. I'm going to be like looking at the school like this is who you have teaching our kids. Like what kind right. of example is that? So, I mean, it's it's tough to kind of like it's tough because people sh- are human beings. They should be able to live their life outside of their career, outside of their job. But yeah. at the same time, you kind of have to walk on eggshells sometimes, depending on your career, to mm-hmm. kind of protect it. Because schools can fire teachers for certain behavior outside of school or mm-hmm. any other professional career. But personally, I do think that as business owners, in the mm-hmm. public eye, I am going to be cautious. I'm not going to do some of the things I did in my teens when I'm out. Right. Just because <laughs> I want to protect the brand. I want to protect right. what we're building. And it's just, you know, you just kind of have to be a little cautious and just be respect uh, respectful of what you're building in your mm-hmm. career as far as what you do in the public eye and, and what could be recorded. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, a lot of, we can obviously see a lot of different situations where people have posted certain things and they've gotten fired for it. And sometimes it's like, it's for the best, especially on like the whole Karen and Ken side <laughs> when they've gotten caught on social media and it's posted, they've gotten fired yeah. from the job is great. There are some situations, you know, especially in our community, like I was think I was telling you the other day, uh, there was a guy, a black man that posted something about, you know, watch out, guys, we're about to get a fresh crop of 18 year olds graduates. I don't know. He was older. I can't remember the um, the, the corporation that he works for. I think it. I really can't remember, but it was almost like a FedEx or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I think they fired him now. You know, again, it's 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 kind of twofold. It's like, well, you have the, I should have free speech. I should be able on my social media, if I'm off the clock, say whatever I want, right? Because this is me, this is mine. But it's, it's, I don't know. It's like when you, especially when you work for another company, Yeah. here's the thing. It's like, you can work for another company, which we do, and, or be your own boss and own your own business. So in the, in the manner of like that you are, you're working for another company, you're kind of that company's brand. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Even though it's like, oh, I'm off the clock. Cause see, right. when you are the um, business owner, there is no off the clock. I mean, there is a, we cut off times, yeah. but you know, we're still, we're kind of always on. But anyway, as an employee of another company, it's like nowadays, and they, a lot of companies make you sign things when you first yeah. start there in terms of mm-hmm. social media and being respectful and that, you kind of are their brand, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, I think, I think there is a line to be drawn and how there is too much, you know, yeah. there is, you can be out there a little too much. And unfortunately you do have to be mindful, even though you're off the clock, you're not at work. You kind of just have to, again, think like, what if someone's recording this? So yeah. I feel like we're, it's not like we're saying don't go out and have fun or whatever, but you do have to, well, at, as you're having fun, you have to be mindful of the cutoff and mm-hmm. maybe take the fun somewhere private inside. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I think too, like, so it's, it's a little different whether you're working for someone else's company or your own, but there's a lot mm-hmm. of similarities too. Right. So for us, because our brand, we're in a sense, the face is behind our brand because who we are and our story helped mm-hmm. is the foundation of the brand. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, yeah, we can't fire ourselves. You know, we we have that power. But what if we have partnerships with people? What if we have loyal customers who have different mm-hmm. beliefs or who don't agree with that? Because we are the face and people we've they've seen us in publications, podcasts, different things. Yeah, our actions could make us lose business, even if we're not getting fired. Yeah, if, if we lose credibility. You know, we lose credibility, then we lose customers, and then we lose money, and then ultimately we lose the business. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so it's different but similar. You know what I mean? It is. It's probably so it's, more. And to be honest, I gotta be honest. Like it's owning your own business is like it carries even more weight. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of being, you know, your appearance and the things that you do, your behavior in public. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, it's tough and unfortunate because 
I, I think about people like Cardi B, for example, who her brand is built on being mm. sexy and loud and outlandish, <laughs> you know, yeah, but she still true. she still gets in trouble um, and she still gets at risk for losing brand deals because of just how how um uh, how how badly people like nitpick at you these days yeah i mean she yeah. could be recorded Our saying critique. one thing they can take mm -hmm. a half a second of it and now the brand is like oh you need to go apologize or we're going to cancel your deal mm -hmm. so it's just it's tough because yeah. it's not you don't you don't have to be a professional career to experience this or to become a victim of this type of thing you can it can be mm -hmm. literally any career it's just society is so hard on on people especially women these days yeah Definitely. I agree. It's, it's definitely, um, it's just, it's tough <laughs> to think about. Because, like you said earlier, I think, you know, you want to, you're grown and you want to be able to, you know, enjoy your life. Cause I, I just couldn't imagine being, you know, um, a celebrity and like how on they have to be. I think as you were talking, I was thinking about Kim Kardashian and, um, there was a brand, I can't think of the brand now but it was coming out with some very inappropriate things in terms of like their marketing um they had a campaign that that they posted and people you know people were noticing like the books in the background and it was just very like inappropriate stuff and then people were kind of going back and blaming kim like how, how can you stand by this brand mm. um and so i imagine that she probably lost some followers doesn't matter no but in terms yeah. of celebrity status just like gosh like how many things have that you're connected yeah. to every time you know you really leave the house you have to be a certain way like your behavior has to be on point just yeah because, again, this image so i do think about and just I'm grateful that there were no like cameras and things like that i don't, I don't think there's any footage of me out in, in college because yeah that could be damaging that could just yeah. be damaging you know, so I can I understand think, the women wanting to sue. Hulu. Yeah. <laughs> I think that might have been the balance, the Balenciaga thing. Yes. Um, but Balenciaga. Kim has been Kim has been came for so many times. I mean, but <laughs> yeah. imagine that, like, you know, I know we want to talk about just like what we did in the past and how it affects us now. But think about what that does to your mental health. Somebody like Kim mm -hmm. Kardashian, where she has to kind of be a robot all, almost where she mm -hmm. has to be a certain way all the time. Cameras are always watching her literally from the probably why she's still in the house they're probably looking through her windows or right. something you know? uh, so, so, uh, so to be so to have cool. to have this to act 24 7 you yeah. know what i mean like that has to take a toll on your mental health so i don't think we should have to do that as as um corporate employees or business True. owners i think we should just just you know try to find that balance but still find time to just be yourself and um you know, for us, we don't, we can be at home and be okay. But for people like Kim, right. we can't be at home and be okay. So just trying to find that balance to be cautious of what you do um, mm -hmm. in light of what it may cause in the future or, you know, how that could come and backfire on you in the future. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, a big takeaway from, you know, the this um, documentary, the Freak Nick documentary is, I guess, just think about you know, what kind of image or brand that you want to put out there about yourself? You know, how do you want people to perceive you and consider that when you're going to social gatherings, um, you know, and big parties. So, you know, I would say my just tip, um, is, you know, watch your, how much you drink, because I have <laughs> my own experience kind of before the business, but, you know, definitely after graduating college, and becoming a teacher my first year of teaching yeah uh, i i wasn't doing very well <laughs> and i was like still trying to go out to happy hours but you know so it's so funny because as co-workers half the group would leave you know after a certain time and then us young folks still trying to hang on would stay late so i could see the difference now um as i've gotten older it's just like i would say my tip you know if you're at a social gathering if you're at a big party what have you watch kind of how you, how much you're drinking and then you know kind of have a cut off even time i think you yeah. should maybe not be the last one to leave <laughs> you know um maybe leave a little earlier or just um yeah. just kind of watching the the amount of alcohol for sure yeah i think to each his own i don't i don't think there's a problem with being the last one to stay like if you just want to have a good time but i think the yeah. key there is definitely knowing your limits when it comes to alcohol and in in not overdoing it because 
you know, if you didn't really drink or you only had one drink, you can stay late and be good. Be your normal. Yes, self. But if right. you're if you're go- going past your limits, then in the longer you stay, the more you drink, you know, it's just going to it's not going <laughs> to be a, true, good, a right. good thing. So my right. advice, too, is, you know, yeah, just just be cautious. You know, you don't have to walk completely on eggshells, but be cautious of what you do in public. And it's just a learning lesson, too, for um us, us who are raising children right now, like me, just my daughter will be a teenager soon. So it's like, listen, this documentary coming out, these women are scared. As you get older, mm-hmm. think about your mm-hmm. future as you make decisions when you hang out. Because, you know. Yes. So I think it's true. a learning lesson to kind of teach your kids, especially those in high school right now. Yeah, that's a good one. I, you're right. You can definitely use this as a prime example of, listen, the things that you do, it's not mm-hmm. private. It's It could come out there. So think about what you want to be when you get older, what you want to do. Um, and again, what kind of, you know, perception are you trying to put out in the world about yourself? Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. if you guys are, are watching and listening to this YouTube, Spotify, Apple podcast, definitely leave us some comments, some engagement. Let us know what you think about this documentary and this Absolutely. episode. And thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of Behind Glamorina Moms on a Mission. We have a passion for building sisterhood through wellness and creating a safe space where all women feel like they belong. Yes, definitely. I would love to get some comments. Um, if you know anyone is watching that um, participated or attended Freaknik, if how mm-hmm. you feel about the documentary, you know, I would love to get uh, other uh, women's opinions and ideas about, you know, how do you guys feel about that? That they're trying to put out this this footage that no one signed off on wanting to be out there. Do you think people should sue? Do they have a case? like what do you what do you guys think definitely let us know in the comments the replay crew and be sure to visit glimmerina.com to shop culturally inspired activewear that reminds you that you are enough and stay well until next week bye